hello welcome to another video of microprocessor so in this video i will introduce the concept of machine language and particularly the machine code which is considered as the base level form of instructions that can be directly executed by the cpu okay so so far we covered the very basic and uh, fundamental things about uh, microprocessor and in this video i will discuss basically the machine language and for this we need to understand how the instructions or programs are executed by the cpu okay so we know that the microprocessor is the cpu of of a microcomputer right and so by definition we, we can say that the microprocessor is a programmable device that takes in numbers it performs some arithmetic or logical operations and according to the program stored in the memory and then it produces this numbers or result uh, and it send it to some output device or it just stored it in the in its memory right so so basically uh, programs are basically a sequence of instruction or a set of instructions right so and each of these instructions are as, uh, are big are stored in the memory okay so this instruction are stored in the memory by the programmer okay. and this execution means that this set of instruction will be correctly interpreted and executed by the processor and it will place the result in the memory or it will reproduce the result on an output device right so so we can say that uh, each instruction follow a three cycle execution model okay so first the microprocessor fetches an instruction from the memory so it read the memory it read the instruction from the memory okay and then it decodes it or interpret that instruction and finally the execution take place so we can say that the it is a three cycle instruction execution model that is fetching decoding and executing or in other words we can say that it is simply read interpret and execute model so i al i already told that the program is basically that there is a set of instructions and it is a sequence of instructions so this sequence of operations this 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 three cycles three cycle model is continued or the sequence is continued until all the instructions of a program are performed and when all these instruction are performed then the the program execution gets completed right so uh, so to instruct the cpu we need to write program right we need to write program and mm, and that's obviously we need the programming language that's why it need a programming language to write the program and there are two basic categories of programming languages high level and low level and now it can be debatable that which language uh, which language belongs to which category right and but the general rule is that the general rule is that that um, it depends on how similar the language is to the only language a computer understand such as machine code and i will talk about this um, more on this machine code later on in this lecture so basically the high level programming language are 
are, are the ones that is that are most uh, uh, developers uh, developers are familiar with that uh, suppose java c++ c python uh, all these are basically high level language and it is uh, and it is a language that high level language is language that allows you to tell a computer to do something uh, but in a syntax that is mm, that is that is easy and intuitive for the programmer or you uh, for human being to understand but it is completely or entirely different language from what a computer understands right and compared to the low language language uh, it is uh, it is it's suppose uh, the uh, and the low level language programming language is it is it is slight abstraction of machine code and it is much human readable it's much less human readable on the other hand the low low level programming language is less human readable but it is easier and it is faster for to, for the computer to understand and also it takes less memory because its complexity is less that's why this low level language takes less memory compared to the high level language and the most common low level language are the assembly language and so we need a assembler to convert this assembly language to 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 uh, to a to a machine code so that the, um, our computer can understand or our cpu can understand what we are actually want to perform okay and basically just like a, just like a dictionary and assembler can look up assembly codes and return the meaning meaning of machine code we'll discuss these things in in broader sense later on uh, in this series of lecture and uh, so 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 basically what i mean to say is that uh, how this high level language high level language uh, are are basically understand uh, may, may are understood by the by the our cpu okay so while we the low level assembly languages are understood by converting the language to machine code by an assembler the most high level language are understood by using either a compiler or an interpreter okay so we need either in we need a compiler or we need a interpreter okay and the so compiled language are basically uh, are basically your source code is converted to a, a a machine code and machine code is something that is understandable to the comp cpu okay so first the compiler converts this your source code or, or your original program into a machine code so that it can understood by the computer and on the other hand the interpreted language for interpreted language such as python ruby and par these are all interpreted language we need it the source code the original program is first translated into a byte code and that that byte code is basically a low level set of instruction which is understandable which can be easily converted to a, a machine code which is by by interpreter the cpu so that cpu can understand what the cpu has to do okay so basically for interpretation for interpreted language uh, we need interpreter and for compiled language we need compiler the basic difference is that in compare in in uh, in in compiled language uh, we, we we first convert the program into a machine code by a compiler but in interpreted language the source case source code is basically converted into byte code and this byte code is basically a very low level of set of instruction which is easily con which is easily converted into a into a, in a form of instruction which is which cpu can understand easily okay 
So there are different um, aspects of this compiled and interpreted language that which one is faster, which is which one is better, and why should we use and uh, at what scenario which we should use which one. This there are many topics we can discuss, with, but I I'm, I'm not going go into those those topics because those are this out of the scope of this um, lecture series because we are basically interested into that how a microprocessor basically uh, microprocessor basically interpret our uh, interpret the, the the machine language or uh, or machine code so we are more more interested into the raw form of programming we are more interested into the low level programming language okay so already i told you that for assembly language or low level programming language uh, low level language we need a assembler because you 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 write assembly language program so your source code in written in assembly language and you you just convert this um, convert this uh, assembly language program into machine code by a assembler okay so from now on now words we will basically focus on this machine code machine language what i what i mean by that and then we'll go into the more details on these things that for for a for, for a085 8, 8 bit microprocessor how this machine code and assembly language is defined or it is how all the process are uh, built in okay so so machine code basically a the base level form of instruction that is uh, that can be directly executed by the uh, cpu okay so machine code is a more fundamental thing to the uh, cpu so it can understand the, uh, it, um, the our machines or cpu only understand this machine code so what is this machine code machine code it is nothing but a set of binary instruction it's set of binary binary bits okay so it's simply a bit pattern okay so for example if we look into or take the example of 8 bit microprocessor 8085 built by intel then we can have so intel is a it is a microprocessor is a 8 bit micro 8085 is a 8 bit processor so it has almost we can have at most 256 different combinations right and so so this all 256 combination can be uh, can be can be can be uh, interpreted as machine code so so we we can have 256 bit patterns right so all this can be used as a machine code and that can form a machine language okay so basically uh, now we are going into this machine language and machine code part uh, and uh, so basically this so machine how we can define the machine language of a of a microprocessor or processor so suppose n for n bit microprocessor we can have two to the power n such words now we'll tell that the, this whole bit patterns can be uh, interpreted as a is a bit pattern can be inter interpreted as a word so two to the power n words can be possible for a n bit microprocessor right so so in, in most microprocessors, but however in most microprocessors, not all of these combinations are used because some of them are reserved for some specific operations that we will discuss. So for example, so 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor, but it uses only 246-bit patterns to form its instruction set. So you can see that we are not using total 256 bit patterns instead of that we are using only 250 246 bit patterns to form its instruction set means this instruction set is actually the part of the machine language okay so this all bit patterns are the part of the machine language so 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 i think you can understand what is uh, what is the meaning of machine code and machine language from this uh, little bit of uh, discussion and from the next in the next lecture we'll basically going to explore more on this assembly language for 8085 and how the instruction set architecture is created for uh, for the 8085 
so in the next lecture i'm going to discuss these things in more detail so with this i'm going to uh, stop this video and thank you for watching and if you have any question please comment on in the comment box okay thank you very much